inverse of square root function. Now this one is kind of difficult. Determine inverse of f of x equals to square root of 4 minus 2x plus 1 and write its domain and range. So in these kinds of questions, we should really start with domain and range of the function. Now, let's look into this function and try to figure out what is the domain of this function. Now, domain of this function is within the square root, we should always have positive, non-negative, right? So that means 4 minus 2x should be greater than or equal to 0, right? Or we can take, we will this time keep minus 2x here, take 4 that side. So we have minus 2x should be greater than or equals to minus 4. And now we will divide by minus 2. So when you divide by minus 2, this becomes minus 4 divided by minus 2 as 2. What happens to this sign? It changes. So we have domain here that x is less than or equal to 2. Correct? That is the domain. So we get domain of this function as, let me write here now, domain is, let me write in this form this time, which is minus infinity, and we are including 2 like this, right? So less than or equal to 2 is the domain of the function. Now what is the range of this function? So it has to do something with 1, right? Of course, so what? Let's try to sketch this function, okay? That may be a good idea. So if you are sketching this function, then how will you do it? Now, to sketch this function, I will rewrite this function, and it will be like this. So we have f of x equals 2. Within square root, I'll take minus 2, factor out minus 2, and we get x minus 2 square root plus 1. That means there is a reflection, horizontal reflection, right? So it's a reflection like this, and, and the graph moves two units to right. This is two units right and one unit up. So basically, we have a reflection, two units right, one unit up, kind of function is like this. Do you see that? Now from here, we can write range of the function is that y is greater than equal to 1, right? So we can write this as like this, 1 and infinity. It's good to know these different kinds of notations. It means that y is greater than or equal to 1. We can never include infinity, right? But 1 is included, here 2 is included. That's the domain and range for this function. That is how it is going to look. So now, what is going to be the domain and range for inverse function? So let's look into inverse of this function. Now there, domain should be equal to range, right? Whatever is given here. So the domain we are looking for is from 1 to infinity. And range, which we are looking for, is minus infinity to 2, right? Minus infinity to 2. So that is what we are looking for in our solution. Remember that, right? So basically we are for a domain which is from 1 to infinity, right? positive and ranges from minus infinity to 2 right so up to 2 but from minus infinity remember that part right so let's now try to do it and see what results do we get okay so to start with we will write y is equals to square root of 4 minus 2x plus 1. To find the inverse of this function, we will swap x and y. So we write x is equals to square root of 4 minus 2y plus 1. And now we can take 1 this side and we get x minus 1 is equals to square root of 4 minus 2y. And now we can square it. So when we square it, what do we get? We get x minus 1 whole square equals to 4 minus 2y. Now to solve for 2y, we can say 2y is equals to 4 minus x minus 1 whole square or y is equal to, we'll divide this by 2, right? When you divide this by 2, you get 2 here minus half.
half of x minus 1 whole square right so this is what you get and now from here we can write our answer of inverse function right now inverse function from here is f inverse x equals to it's better to write minus half x minus 1 whole square plus 2 right that is a standard way we look at the quadratic function now if you see this quadratic function then is it really the inverse of this function tell me is it really the inverse of this function now this is a parabola and parabola has no restrictions on its domain well, we are expecting restrictions our domain should be greater than one do you see that our domain should be greater than one right so remember this part when we square it we actually incorporated error we made everything positive right first thing second is this is like this function right we don't have full kind of like this so if we have a parabola we are looking for one parabola one part of the parabola so this answer indicates that the solution is like this no 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 solution is not like this we are looking for just one part of it we are looking for only this part of the parabola do you get my point do you see our domain domain is from 1 to infinity that is why we started with domain and range and I wanted to highlight this portion so actually when you do all this correct when you square at this time both sides at that time you have to write down your restriction and the restriction is that x is greater than or equal to 1 so that is the restriction which you have to write where x is greater than or equal to 1 do you understand so this parabola has a vertex at 1 we cannot consider both the sides we need to consider only one side do you understand that is what it is and the side which is being considered as x greater than or equal to 1 if you don't write this then your solution is wrong right because inverse if you write as half of x minus 1 whole square plus 2 that means there is no restriction on domain so you have to add the restriction towards this right and now we'll write on our answer and answer is f inverse of the function is a function which is minus half x minus 1 whole square plus 2 where x is greater than or equal to 1 right so that is how it is going to be correct and range and domain matches range is less than 2 right here it is going downwards less than or equal to 2 so that is how less than or equal to 2 so I should have written like this yes so that is how we should do inverse of a square root function have a good look at it and try to understand and also try to understand why I did all this it was not just to show you that we are doing a mistake it was that it is a good process to find domain range of your inverse function right in the beginning so that we can catch our own mistake right that is why I hope you appreciate it thank you